I was actually, you know what? I was talking to somebody about squatting in the comment section and they asked me to make a video on squatting. I don't go to the gym anymore. I don't really have a, a real good way of filming myself. Mark Ripito, starting strength is probably the best squatting coach that I've ever come across. So I'm going to review this video uh, just to kind of go over my thoughts on squatting. I don't like axial loading, which is what you see a lot of people do. They'll be basically on the spine. I don't think axial loading is very good. I like low bar squat. So this is going to be my reaction video basically. Just squat all the <laughs> way down. Take your elbows and shove your knees out. Now, now I'm going to try not to comment that much in this video. I know sometimes I get a little carried away with that, but I also can't just straight watch a video because then, you know, issues kind of present themselves with the copyright stuff. Get in your mind the idea that this segment right here is right not here. Vertical. Okay. You're supposed to, you need to be about right here because the whole idea of the squat is this. Okay shove up against my hand, drive up. That's the squat, okay? Do that again. But here we are, bend over. Now, push me up. That's how you squat. You squat with this, mm. not with this. Not with the knees. Not and that's why the kettlebell swing is so effective at building that whole region because that's what you use to move the kettlebell. If, if, if the kettlebell, doesn't automatically kind of swing once it's through your legs and kind of go up, you know, about this level and just kind of fall on its own. You're using momentum. Well, it is momentum, but you're not using your, your, you know, your hip thrusting, your, your strength. Not with the feet against the floor. Don't lift the chest. Don't push the floor away. Don't think about straightening out your knees. Think about this right here. Shove your ass up out of the hole again. Drive up hard. All right, now, here's a little trick that makes that work better. Look at the floor right there. Again, squat down. See, the, put your eyeballs right on the floor. Notice that what that did with your neck is kind of normalize your spinal position, even across the cervical. Now, look at the floor and drive up. Good. Do that again. Push hard, hard up out of the hole. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Now, let me, just in contrast, let me show you. Where have you been looking when you squat? Probably nowhere in particular. Okay, again, look over there. This is by far the most important part. So pay attention to this. This will. This is like the key to the whole, the whole, you know, kingdom here. Now squat up. Which works best? Looking down. Looking down actually works best. You're. Ch you see people doing this all the time. They're, they're up here like this. Their chest is like, you know wherever they're looking up at the ceiling like that's going to do anything and it, it just doesn't it you know and i see this even in high level lifters i'm like i, I guarantee you could lift more if you, you were looking in the right spot chest is going to go where your eyes go so if you look up your chest comes up if your chest comes up what do your hips do they go forward if your hips go forward what do your knees do they go forward too and if your knees go forward what happens to your knee angle closes right and what happens to your hamstrings they slack distally they slack from the knee end of the hamstrings and what are you trying to do with your hips you're trying to maintain a back angle with your hamstrings and the back angle is what allows you to drive your ass up out of the bottom anytime you lift you can't say that word now? I mean, my goodness. If this up, you <laughs> kill this drive, okay? So looking at the floor, maintaining a more horizontal back angle allows you to drive your hips up out of the floor with a lot more power. And you find examples of this in powerlifting. If you look in the powerlifting meets where they actually judge depth, then what you'll see is that there's two basic ways to, to try to squat. And the, the, the one that is the most productive is when we're staying here and staying in the hips, in the hips. Okay. It's a good way to visualize it, staying within the hips. This is especially easy for people who have wider hips. Most females have wider hips. You're gonna be, it's easier to visualize. But obviously 
either you know either sex can visualize this but it, you know it just it's 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 a real good visualization right there okay feel that bone it goes right under that it's the spine of the scapula this is real critical okay. and so what you've got to do is get get used to the idea that the that the top position the rack position of the bar in the squat is not comfortable gotcha. it's tight it's not supposed to be painful but it's not supposed to be comfortable it's supposed to be tight there is nothing comfortable about it you're probably going to have some kind of even maybe calluses or you know maybe scraped skin in the beginning elbows up chest up see when you do both of those things you tighten the whole back so chest up higher than that chest up higher than that good toes out more than you want good that's the stance okay now the first thing you're gonna do the toes out is the most probably the most uncomfortable part of this whole thing the squat is not meant to be a comfortable thing right it's it's built for a purpose and i would wager the bet that if the, it's the if you could only do one exercise the squat would build everything in your body and you wouldn't have to do anything else when you go down is you're gonna bend at the hip. You're gonna shove your ass back and that means this happens to your back angle. At the same exact time, knees go forward and out so that they stay parallel to the toes. Go to the foot here. Squat, drive your butt up first. That one was the first one you did correctly. You feel the difference on that? Stand all the way up. Again, knees and hips at the same time. Shove your ass up. There you go. See, you don't worry about this. You'll stand up without having to ma micromanage your chest. Don't think about your chest. Think about this. Go. That looked pretty good. You kind of feel how, it, how it's working now? Make sure the depth is critical. You don't get the bounce into the rebound if you don't get your... Now, that time, you did the worst thing in the whole world. You feel your hips move forward? Don't do that. Okay. Stay here. Drive them up. Hips move up. That's how you squat. Now, rebound. Rebound. Don't pause down there. The balance is critical. It's a kinetic chain. It's like a, re uh, it's like a rubber band. If you can use that rubber band effect to your advantage, you will have so much better of a squat. If you stop at the bottom, it's like snapping the rubber band. That's the movement. But that time the hips went forward again. No, that time the hips went forward again. That's that Louis Simmons <laughs> shit. Now, yeah, don't do that. Just that looks pretty good. At no point does anything come forward. Okay. All right? It's like visualizing a line just being just a straight line. The bar is here, Brett. Drive it up. Drive it up. Exaggerate. That! See the difference between the previous rep and that one? That thing right there. Shove it up out of the hole. That's the squat. Exactly. Do it again. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Rack it. Nothing goes forward. Everything goes straight up. From now, I don't know if I love the squat racks that he's using right here, because if, if you are at the bottom of the squat and it doesn't go right and you got to dump the bar, it could hit you on the way down. Probably not. Uh, that's, that's my only... I've had to dump the bar. Don't, you know, if, you, if you're at the bottom of the squat and you know it's not, it ain't going up, don't care about the bar. Don't care about the weights. Don't care about any of it. Just drop it. From the hips. It's gonna make a lot of noise. You'll get over it. All right, that's a good stance. Big breath. Big breath. A little bit more here. That's it. See the difference? It's subtle, but it's important. Bounce. I'm also surprised he hasn't mentioned this either, or maybe he didn't, I didn't hear it. I think it's called the Valsalva movement or Valsalva movement or whatever. You want to have oxygen or your lungs at full capacity 
So you breathe in at the top of the squat, you hold it, and then you come back up. And then once you're at the top of the squat, then you let out the oxygen, and then you, you know, you do it again. It's on this lap. That was the best one you've done today. Do one more, just like that. Good, exactly like that, rack it. Good, toes out, there's your stance. Big breath, every rep. Good. Good, nice little rebound out of the hold. You're right below parallel. Good. I'm surprised he hasn't mentioned this either. A perfect squat is, is parallel to your, your hips or below the level of your knees. So if you've got like long femurs, you're gonna have to have a wider stance, uh, but you're gonna have to play around with that. That's exactly right, good. You rebound off. And he dumped into his right knee on that one. You wanna try to stay as uniform as humanly possible. And I cannot believe he's got this guy that's nowhere near 225, squatting 225. The tight stuff at the bottom and then catch that rebound and drive your hips. Tiny bit wider at the heels. There it is, right there. Good, big air, eyeballs. Perfect, again. Good, rack it. That's exactly right, those were good, those were good. Biggest myth about squats, biggest problem with squats, the biggest form error most people make with squats is back angle. Back angle in the squat is sp this is specifically what I was talking about with the person in the comment section. Uh, so this is, this is definitely something that you should listen to. Supposed to be more horizontal because we're using the back as part of the leverage system when we squat. And if you try to maintain too upright a back angle, you can't lift as much weight. Now, the problem with that is that the conventional wisdom people, the ones that derive their strength and conditioning credentials from physical therapy think that, and they've all agreed to agree with each other on this, that a more vertical back angle prevents something that is called shear, okay? Shear is supposed to be you know, a fatal condition that, that paralyzes people when they apply it to their back, all right? Uh, you, in other words, they think that the back needs to be as vertical as possible when you squat to prevent the application of shear to the back. Well, that's a problem because we are using the back as part of the leverage system and in order for the back to do its share of the job, it must be at a more horizontal angle so that you can apply the force to the big muscles of the hips so that we can strengthen them. And guess what else happens? The back gets stronger too. It's just like everything else. It gets stronger if you stress it. And you stress it and you make the weight go up a little bit and suddenly you can squat 800 pounds with your back at the correct angle to lift 800 pounds. There you go. And amazingly enough, nobody's back gets hurt. So if you were getting, uh, there's another, another thing that I kind of wish he would have mentioned. When you are in the, the bottom of the squat, if you feel like your core is falling apart and it's acting as if it's a it, like something in the way, like there's there, it feels like it's it's kind of flexing. You your back and your ch everything is not tight enough. It's hard to describe if you've squatted and you've felt it before. Then you know what I'm talking about. But that has a lot to do with this back angle. Everybody needs to just get over the idea that here, and this is the most common problem. Now, if you're doing a front squat, that your back needs to be fairly vertical. We see people that have read the book three or four times come to the seminar and they're trying to squat here and we have to move them into position like I had to move you because the idea is here. Point your nipples at the floor, okay? See if that cue penetrates okay. because we want the back here, okay? Let's see what happens. Good, both feet together. And he's got this guy squatting 275. I don't know what this guy's workout regimen is. I don't know anything other than if this is the first time he's squatted in a long time, this dude is not walking tomorrow. There's no, there is no way. It's like a squat out of the rack. Good. <clears throat> this 
right here is extremely important. If this is not tight enough, you will get stuck in here on the way up. The only way that I can describe it is the way I did. You'll understand it if it happens to you. Goes out. Good. Big giant breath. Good hips. Point your nipples at the floor. All right, remember your wrists this time. They need to be. Oh, that's a 10. All right, so he's got him squatting like 255-ish. Tighter. <sighs> All of this supports the bar. Chest up. That's your stance. Now, big, big breath. That's high. Bury it. There it is. Call that number one. Drive hips, drive hips, Brad. He's getting, you can tell it's it's kind of happening to him. You get stuck and it kind of brings your the, the top of you forward. And then you have to kind of, it's it's hard to describe other than, I don't know. I don't know how to describe stop, it. Stop, stop, big breath. Four, don't exhale on the way up, big breath. Drive your ass, stay in your ass. That's it, good. When it gets heavy, when it gets heavy, that moves the bar. Okay. But you have to remember, you gotta stay tight up here. You have to stay tight up here. If you are not tight up here, it is going to fold forward. And I reacted to a, a, a video where this guy was supposedly spotting this woman. And as she came up, her the front of this this area right here could not maintain the amount of weight that she had and she came forward and it skinned the back of her neck and everything so in that instance you just got to drop it just drop it you do one of these it is it'll fall shove your ass up in the air you dig into that that's where this that's where strength is all right okay I hit it all right that's it that's the video uh you know do I kind of miss it a little bit, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's that's about the best pointers I can give is the upper back really has to be tight. It has to be uncomfortably tight. You'll know what I'm talking about if it's not tight like that, because it will start folding forward. And if the light, you know, if the weight's light enough, you know, it's not a big deal, but you should have that on point before you really start getting into heavy weight at all. And that, is the video uh any comments questions down below like subscribe and i'll talk to you in the next one